The war in Marawi is indeed a senseless tragedy. Hundreds died in the military operations to clear Marawi city of the armed terrorists. The death toll includes over a hundred soldiers. Hundreds of thousands of evacuees had to be forced to leave their homes, leave their jobs, their livelihoods, and give up their normal lives because of the ongoing crisis in the city. It is difficult to understand what must be going on in the minds of the people who wage war against another. Why would anyone want to inflict violence on other people? The answer sometimes can be very difficult to grasp for most peace-loving people like us. Ayaw natin ang gera. We just want to enjoy some level of peace and order with no threat of being physically harmed by other people. People who wage war justify it by saying they have a just cause. And then government forces who fight them say they are just keeping the peace. They need to implement military operations against people who are out to threaten that peace or people who are out to destroy the government. And because guns and military equipment are used, there will be blood. Enemy forces will die as a result. And soldiers will die in the effort to defeat their enemy. And unfortunately, in many cases, just like in Marawi, ordinary people die as well. They are what the military would call collateral damage. The cry of our heart is, when will this stop? Kailan titigil ang lahat ng ito? Will there ever be a time when wars will cease and the killings will end? The truth is, wars have been waged since the beginning of human history. Practically every nation in history has been involved in wars or some level of military conflict at certain points in their history. Even during the time of Jesus, the Jewish people had been under threat of war for a long time. They were a subjugated nation under the rule of the Roman Empire. And the presence of Roman soldiers was an ever-present threat of military action on the people. Peace was very fragile. It was at this time that Jesus talked about how war was about to fall on the city of Jerusalem. He told his disciples that as a result of this war, the temple in Jerusalem would be completely destroyed. The disciples were alarmed about this. They expected that with the coming of Jesus as Messiah, the Jewish nation would finally achieve the final victory of Israel. And here was Jesus talking about the complete destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. It didn't make sense. And so they asked, when the end of the age was to come, which meant for them the coming of the kingdom of God. They wanted to know when the ultimate peace of God was to come. And Jesus' reply was most likely to have given them more questions in their minds than answers. Jesus said, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed. For this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Jesus was saying that wars between peoples and groups and nations and kingdoms were certain to happen. Jesus referred to them as birth pains. It signaled the coming of something new, the birth of something wonderful, the coming of the kingdom of God, the ultimate rule of God in the world. This would be the time when God's shalom under God's sovereign rule will finally end all wars and completely recreate the world in His image. But before that could happen, the birth pains had to happen. And so wars and rumors of wars would not go away yet. Fighting and killing and death 
would come as a matter of course. But they all point to something that we can all look forward to. Jesus promised that when he comes back, the rule of God will be made complete. And finally, the much-awaited peace of God will finally become a reality for those who put their trust in Jesus. Now, when is that going to be? No one knows. Jesus didn't say when exactly. But we do know that the wars we experience today means that we are moving closer to that eventuality. So we need to always be in prayer during these times of war. Let us pray for the people of Marawi who have been suffering as exiles from their land. Let us pray for the soldiers who have risked their lives in the attempt to end the fighting in the war-torn city. Let us pray that the war will not spread and that the country in general be spared from the bloodshed. Pray for God's mercy on our nation. And as we continue to lift up to the Lord the wars that are being waged in our country, and as we long for the coming of the ultimate peace under the rule of God, Always keep in mind, faith matters too.